Hi all, I'm Amai. Hi all, I'm Owen. We are data engineers working in the data collection and platforms team at carsales.com.eu. Our team is responsible for delivering data solutions for a global businesses of the company. Today, we are going to share with you about how we built a lightweight serverless data pipeline using AWS Fargate with ECS and Apache Airflow. Okay, Owen, so where did it all start? Well, it started with the business requirement for a project where we needed to serve reporting across three different countries which have respective operational databases and designs. After our initial analysis, we realized that we needed to do data cleansing and transformation to standardize the data for reporting. One example is conversion and partitioning in EPC timestamp. Also, we wanted to ensure that the data consumers are able to easily integrate the result data set with the other tables in the data platform. Yes, and we had to do this within a short time as well, isn't it, Owen? So how did we progress? Oh, because we are a team of Spark developers and we are generally comfortable in building projects in PySpark. So we initially were contemplating something like this pipeline, where we follow our normal design pattern by using Lambda Airflow to spin up EMR cluster on schedule to run the Spark applications. Then the Spark application on the EMR cluster does the extract, transform, and loads data into F3. This data then is available to be used by our data consumers. They generally connect to this data via Amazon Athena or Redshift Spectrum. But do you remember, Amit? We felt that for this lean transformation and cleansing required for this particular job, we can probably keep it simple. Yes, 100% over. So on introspection, we found some points to reconsider in that pipeline. Uh, at the scale or data volume required for this project, we don't really need to use Spark or distributed environment. Just to provision or spin up an EMR cluster, it, is, it would take around 10 minutes on an average. However, this pipeline, to, the total runtime of this pipeline would be less than 10 minutes. Having simple dockerized Python jobs would make it easy as we don't have to worry about cluster configurations. If there are no benefits in using a distributed environment, we should simplify our development, deployment, and maintenance process. During this design phase, uh, we came across a blog by Mike Krieger where he mentions about running pipelines on Airflow and ECS, Apache Airflow and ECS. So after discussing in the team, we concluded on this serverless pipeline where we use ECS target to spin up the Docker containers and then execute our Python jobs on them. During start of the implementation, we found AWS Data Wrangler package, which provides very cool utilities and abstractions for using pandas on AWS services. We use Airflow to schedule our ECS Fargate tasks, executing Python ETL jobs. So basically, our data source and target remained the same, but we were able to use lean and simple serverless learn Python applications as opposed to complex PySpark application on distributed EMR clusters. Here is a sample code for explanation. So this code is an is of an Apache DAC with ECS operator. On the left hand side is a simple representation of the Airflow DAC. It simply means that we have three tasks which are run in parallel and in isolation. So each respective businesses are do pipeline do not interfere within one another. On the right hand side is the implementation of the ECS operator where you can see the launch type is ECS Fargate, which makes it serverless. We use the environment variables to pass the contextual information to the application that the application needs. For example, 
we pass the region and country code based on which the application decides the data sources to use, which one to choose for a respective job. So over. We right now we went through how we implemented the new pipeline. Do you want to talk about why this pipeline is better in in this context? Yes, I mean, we are all data people and we like facts and figures, don't we? So we have prepared the table for comparison. From a development and maintenance point of view, running a PySpark application on distributed cluster is not as simple as running a Python pandas job in a Docker container. We don't need to spend efforts on calculating the required resources or a cluster configuration on YAML. This also makes our development phase easy as we can build and test the app locally. There is also a big win on provision time because Fargate is serverless. There is practically no visible time needed to provision the resources. On the other hand, EMR needs about 10 minutes on average to speed up the cluster. After deployment with ECS Fargate, we are seeing that the whole ETL pipeline runs for only about five minutes. Speaking about cost, we calculated that Fargate is cheaper than running an EMR cluster for this pipeline. We are also able to fine tune the CPU and memory requires a required to run the job in an efficient manner using e ECS Fargate. We are still able to provide the same serving layer, which is really cool. The loaded result data set is in parquet format, partition and stored in F3. And it's accessible by Glue Data Catalog via Athena or Redshift Spectrum. So there's no impact on data consumers at all. Thanks for the really nice summary, Owen. So what the what is the magic plan that saved us a lot of time while developing this ETL pipeline? Okay, here is the big review. Is the AWS Data Wrangler package. To get you familiar with our magic one, I'll briefly walk you through the package. It's an open source Python library developed and maintained by the AWS team. It enables us to use Pandas data frame to read and write data on AWS. It also provides handy APIs to use AWS services like Amazon S3, AWS Glue Data Catalog, Amazon Athena, and other databases. I mean, do you want to take everyone through some of the practical examples? Sure. Let's go through a couple of examples to show the benefits of using this package and why is it so awesome. The first example in this slide is to show how simple it is to write data into Athena tables using this package. On the left hand side is, is a sample code to write the pandas data frame to Athena table. The API s 32 k accepts flexible parameters to deal with partitions and to insert or write and append data. This API provides schema evaluation out of the box. That means if the pandas data frame happens to have a new column, which is not in the Athena table, the package will detect it, detect it and add it into the target table. It can also add a new table in the Athena catalog. On the other hand, if you see and, uh, and think about what do we need to write, what code do we need to write to achieve the same thing in native Pandas API or Boto3 calls, we need to do the following steps. First, we need to find the SP location of the table by using Boto3 Glue Client API. Then we need to save the parquet data into that S3 location. We then need to run a command to repair the Athena table partitions or add this new partition into the group catalog. If there is a new column, we need to explicitly add it into Athena table as well. So this was the first example. Now let's go to one more example. So the previous example was about loading data into S3. Here, 
we want to give you a quick example on how easy is it to read data from AWS services. On the left hand side, we are using Data Wrangler to load that load load data into Pandas data frame using AWS Wrangler API wrappers for S3 and Athena respectively. So you can see it's just one simple line of code for both the API calls. Whereas on the right hand side, we can see that while doing the same with Boto3 library, we might have to write different lines of code and probably map the data to Pandas data frame explicitly. In addition to these, AWS Data Wrangler has very handy APIs to interact with other AWS services like Redshift, Blue Data Catalog, etc. Well, these were some of the benefits. Do you have more to add over? Well, I think you have covered some of the benefits I made. What I want to talk about next are some of the implementation specific challenges we came across. So the first challenge is working with complex data type. As you can see from the screenshot, when we try to read a column with the array of struct data type, it throws the reading list of structs from parquet file not yet supported error. It's not really a limitation on the AWS data regular package itself. It is a limitation on using pandas to work with parquet files. But don't worry, there are possible workarounds. To read the data, we will be able to analyze the array of struct column in the SQL query and pass it to run in Athena. So when the data is loaded into pandas data frame, it's no longer an array of struct data type. And to write the data, we use the approach to first write all data into st two staging tables with one to many relationship. Then we run a SQL query, which aggregates the required columns into an array of struct and insert them into the target Athena table. So the second challenge we had was related to the driver support for MS SQL Server in DBN environment. One of our data sources is MS SQL Server. At this point, the data regular package, unfortunately, doesn't, doesn't include driver for MS SQL Server. So to make it working in docking container, we had to install the required packages in Docker file. This issue wasn't straightforward to solve and we had to spend a fair bit of time to conclude the fix. As you can see from the code, which is uh, point three, we ended up using native Pandas API calls with high ODBC to load data from MS SQL Server into Pandas data frame. I think these are some key challenges we faced during the implementation. Do you have anything else to add on it? Oh, thanks, mate. That was great. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I think these are enough challenges for speaking in one session. So before we finish, we want to mention and acknowledge the references that helped us build uh, this pipeline. Also, we wanted to thank the team who worked uh, very hard on this uh, pipeline and task. Thank you so much.